Did you know that when you watch a movie on a computer, the frames are actually being shown to you in a pretty strange kind of timing? Now, this is one of those episodes where we actually have to go pretty deep into some film concepts. It might be a little bit dry if you're not very interested, but I'll try to keep it relevant and interesting. Anyway guys, you are watching a random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. This is 0612 TV. Welcome aboard. Hello and welcome to another random Wednesday episode. So today, we're actually going to take a look at concepts like pull down, things that, you know, have some sort of a historical meaning, but I'm going to try and make it as relevant as possible to, you know, what we experience today. So before we formally begin, let us actually clear up some terminology and concepts. Now, a video is essentially a whole bunch of pictures shown to you in quick succession. The speed in which these pictures are shown to you is called a frame rate. And a frame rate is measured by counting how many frames are shown to you per second. Now, monitors and screens show you video information by repeatedly refreshing the screen. Essentially, at every refresh, the screen is redrawn from top to bottom. And the refresh rate of a screen refers to how many refreshes it makes per second. So, these are all the important things we need to understand. So, let us now move on to take a look at playing a movie on your computer. So here's the deal. Movies tend to be 24 frames per second. Obviously, there are exceptions, but most of the lots are 24 frames per second. Your computer screens tend to have a refresh rate of 60 Hz. Similarly, there tend to be exceptions, but most of them are 60 Hz. So let us actually draw this out pictorially to make things easier to understand. Now, let's imagine this bar represents one second of real time. If your screen refreshes 60 times per second, then if we cut this bar into 60 pieces, every piece will refer to one particular refresh. To be precise, a refresh happens every time you see a vertical line. So okay, we have that. Now let's take a look at the same second, but now in terms of frames of the movie. Since there are 24 frames, we're going to cut this bar up into 24 pieces. Do you see a problem yet? Now, take a look at what's happening here. Essentially, at the first frame, your screen refreshes. That's fine, it's going to display the first frame of the movie. Then the next time your screen refreshes, it's still displaying the same frame. But the problem comes about here. Now, at this point of time, your movie is saying, okay, let us now replace the first frame with the second frame. However, your screen does not actually update, does not actually draw out the frame until a short interval later. And what that means is that frame shows up on your screen a little bit late. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to zoom out now, and I'm going to color some of the refreshes green. Every refresh colored green refers to a particular refresh in which a new frame is shown on screen. Now, notice that the intervals between these green frames are not consistent. As you can see, the first frame is staying on screen for three refreshes worth of time. The second frame is showing up on screen for only two. Then the next frame stays on screen for three and the subsequent frame shows up on screen for two. Now imagine this happening quickly enough. If you have a sharp enough eye, you will get this fast slow effect because certain frames are lingering around longer than others. If I were to understand my readings correctly, in fact, most video players don't actually do anything to handle this by default. What this means is as things stand, movies tend to still be watchable despite this problem, and in fact, if you don't specially go and look out for it, you might not even notice this effect. But alright, let's say we want to solve this. What can we do? Now in fact, some modern TVs have actually gone the extra mile to try to solve this issue using a method called motion interpolation. Here's how this works. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a block of 5 refreshes, which nicely fits into two movie frames. Now what they do is they only display the frames at basically the closest refresh. So essentially for the first refresh, they just have to show the first frame. And then for the subsequent frames, they will actually make use of these two frames to sort of guess what motion is happening between these two frames. For example, if the first frame has my hand here and the second frame has my hand here, essentially they'll try to look for this motion and they will generate the in-between frames that will look something like this and this and this and then they'll display the lot 
and the idea is to fill in the missing frames by actually putting back the motion that wasn't there between the two different frames. This obviously has its good and bad. If the TV is actually unable to detect the motion, then things are going to look weird. And from time to time, what happens is artifacts tend to be generated. But this tends to be a little bit overkill. And the reason why I bring it up is just that, well, now you have an explanation of what your TV is doing. I also recommend turning it off. It sometimes ruins movies, it just doesn't make it feel, you know, like a movie. I'm not saying a high frame rate is bad, I'm just saying that, you know, those are fake frames anyway and tend to not add to the entertainment value of what you're watching. But anyway, I'm digressing, let us actually go back to the topic of, well, trying to fix the problem of the frames not lining up. So I'm actually going to suggest a very simple idea to you. I cannot say for sure if this method is actually being used anywhere, but if you understand this, then you'll understand how it was actually properly done. So let's actually name our two movie frames A and B. Now, these two movie frames need to be shown over a duration of 5 refreshes. Now, for the first two refreshes, it's pretty trivial because, well, frame A is displayed for the first two refreshes and frame B is displayed for the last two. Now, since this middle refresh actually lies between frame A and frame B, one way we can actually try to solve this problem is to actually blend frame A and frame B together and display both of these frames during that middle refresh. So essentially, earlier on we've looked at a method called frame interpolation, now we're looking at a method called frame blending. So these are the two ways you can actually smoothen the transition for this sort of issue. Now traditionally, how is this done? You see, back then when we had CRT TVs, essentially the video was drawn on screen using a method called interlace video. What this means is your CRT TV still has a refresh rate, it still refreshes from top to bottom like you would expect, but it does not draw an entire picture with one refresh. Instead, it draws every other line. For the next refresh, it goes back and fills in all the lines that it didn't fill in the first time around. And in fact, we can actually exploit interlacing to perform the frame blending effect that we described earlier. In fact, this even makes it easier because you don't actually have to blend the frames together. All you have to do is just arrange the fields properly. Oh yes, to clarify the terminology, a field refers to essentially half a frame. That is one set of lines, either the even or the odd lines in a frame. In other words, a frame has two fields, an odd field and an even field. I'm not going to go too far into the whole interlacing thing because I've already done a video about that. If you're interested to find out more about this, do click on the link that I've put on screen. So how do we do this? Let us now take a look at a block of 10 refreshes. Do note that every refresh essentially refers to half a frame, that is either the even or the odd set of lines. Let us now name our four movie frames A, B, C, and D. For the first two refreshes, we show frame A. First one of the fields, then the other. So I'm using the numbers 1 and 2 to indicate field number 1 and field number 2. People tend to refer to fields as an odd field and an even field, since any one of these two can come first, depends on the standard that is being used. We're not actually going to sweat that detail, we're just going to call it field 1 and field 2. So going back to the diagram, what we're going to do is we're also going to show frame B as two fields. So we have B1 and B2. Now this is where the magic comes in, frame B is actually shown again. In particular, just one field of frame B is actually mixed with one field of frame C. So what we have is, say, B2, C1. For the next set of fields, we have C2, D1 in nice order, and then finally ending up with D1, D2. So essentially, by making just two field duplications, what we have is basically four frames worth of movie being split out into 10 different refreshes. This is your actual traditional 2-3 pulldown that was actually used when converting movies to something that can be shown on TVs. And there you have it. That is how you actually show something with one frame rate on a screen capable of displaying a different frame rate. I'm sorry this video ran a little bit long and felt a little bit disorganized, but I certainly hope you've learned something. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. 
Hello, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.